Hey YouTube, it's me, Brandon Colonel again. I've got another slight, mild tea review, I guess. Uh, as the same thing with the last one, uh, the Dodge actually allows you to do some kind of a review on your tea to, to tell people the best ways to make it. Uh, so, uh, this particular tea was uh, called Lawrence's Spicy Treat, based off of uh, the uh, the novel series Spice and Wolf, and also an anime series. Uh, this is the picture I ended up putting on it, just to kind of differentiate between other stuff, but also the fact of uh, I didn't exactly know how to go about getting permission to use various pictures, because they do want you to get permission. Uh, there's actually a very definitive spot on it where it says, please get permission for, for whatever picture you use. So, I just ended up going with the scales for Lawrence, but specifically what this is, is a spiced apple chai. <clears throat> yeah, I ended up blending regular malsa chai and uh, an apple chai, and then it, I have an accent of ginger on the inside of it. It, it does not come in this. Um, uh, it ends up coming in... It's like a, a foil bag type thing, resealable. And then I just uh, cut out this part and tape it onto some random Tupperware. Um, that's what it looks like here. Um, so it's uh, basically just black tea with all the various different types of spices to make chai tea. Uh, <clears throat> basically all chai tea is is standard black tea mixed with uh, some peppercorns, uh, um, uh, and a few other various types of spices. I, I can't remember all of them. I think it's like cardamom and cinnamon for various types of... I don't remember exactly what it is. But um, but the specific blend that I used, like I said, was uh, uh, spiced apple chai and uh, malsa chai. Mix those together with some ginger. And then you have a wonderful tea. Uh, typically what I do is for every two cups of, of water, I mix in... Uh, five half teaspoons of the tea leaves. And they're usually fairly leveled off because this is a very strong tea. Uh, usually I go a lot more leaves for the majority of my tea because I like a very strong tea. You put that much tea leaves inside of this and it's going to be so strong you can barely drink it. Now, for anybody who can really see that very well, it doesn't exactly look like tea. Basically what I've done here um, is my favorite way to make it, and uh, and that's actually making it into a latte. Um, basically what I do for, for that is uh, I basically just uh, fill up uh, the bottom of a pan with just enough, uh, with just enough milk in order to uh, cover the bottom of the pan. Not really anything more than that, because I, I really don't want, want to make more than just one cup of tea at a time. And I don't want to have to vary my uh, my measurements for really anything else, so I don't really take away too much water or add it or subtract any leaves. So I put in just enough milk on the bottom of a pan to coat it, but also too much more than that, and it ends up tasting like milk much less than that, and you either A, burn your milk, or B, it really doesn't add anything. So honestly, for me, that amount is just perfect. But one more thing that I do is instead of adding honey, like a lot of people actually do, uh, I add brown sugar. And it, that ends up basically making, to me, what ends up being the perfect chai tea. As far as brewing it goes, uh, typically what I end up doing is uh, I bring it up to a boil, and then as it's boiling, then I very quickly add in my, f my uh, five half teaspoons, and then immediately take it off. Uh, and cover the, the pot directly, because usually I prefer to make it inside of the pot. Uh, if I've got a kettle, then uh, then I do make sure to warm up the kettle beforehand uh, with uh, with boiling water, so that way the, the kettle doesn't immediately leach away half your heat. Uh, and then I keep the boiling water in there right up until I'm ready to pour in the new water with the, the tea leaves. And so I, I pour in the tea leaves into the kettle, and then immediately dump the boiling hot water inside of it. And then again, same thing, cover it up with a lid, and then just wrap that as tightly as I can inside of a towel to again make sure that 
as much of the heat as possible stays inside. Because me personally, I really like strong tea. If you want weaker tea, then the, a couple of things that you can do is, uh, for starters, add less tea leaves. That's the biggest thing to do, is just simply add less leaves. The second thing that you can do, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of just sitting on my knees right now because I'm living in a new place and I don't have the perfect setup just yet. Still trying to figure out exactly how I want to do these videos. But, um, but yeah, you can add less tea leaves for starters. Um, you can also um, not, uh, not boil the water as hot. Um, let the water sit for about 30 to 40 seconds. That'll take away about 10 to 15, possibly 20 degrees. And then, it, and then you can start steeping your leaves. Steep the leaves for a shorter period of time. Um, I usually go for 15 minutes just as a standard uh, for really any leaf. It doesn't matter if it's green tea, black tea, white tea. It, it doesn't matter which type of tea it is. I'll, I'll steep it for 15 minutes. And, it, and certain teas, I'll actually boil it inside of the water for another 30 seconds before even starting that 15 minutes. This is a very strong tea. You do not need to boil it for any period of time. Just bring the water up to boiling, pour in your leaves, and immediately cover with a lid, wrap up in a, in a towel, and then turn on your timer. Now as far as this specifically goes, if you're looking for the, for the apple flavor, then you can taste it. Uh, I particularly taste red apple in particular. Again, specific, which usually I'm not a big fan of red apples, but uh, I, I more go for the tart sourness of a, like a Granny Smith. But uh, and I don't really know the particulars of all the different kinds of red apples, but um, but you you really can taste red apple in this particularly. Um, there's always been something in particular about the peel of a red apple that that always stood out to me, and that's one of the main things that I taste in here is honestly the peel of a red apple, but um, but even a little bit of the sweetness of the, of the meat of the apple, you can still taste that in here. Uh, the standard chai flavor is really the, the predominant text of it, uh, but the brown sugar and milk actually end up just giving it a different flavor entirely. Uh, you can still taste it through all that. If you're if you're just trying the tea by itself, then uh, then that on its own, you can really taste the apple a little bit better. But honestly, to me, the latte is the best way that that I prefer to drink it. Um, it just gives it a little bit more round feeling in the mouth instead of uh, uh, instead of a little bit spikier feeling it when you're just drinking the tea by itself. Uh, which, that actually brings another interesting point. Personally, whenever I've tried it, when you're just drinking it, the, the chai tea, not, not in a latte or anything, but when you're just drinking the chai tea, it actually tastes really good with honey and the brown sugar doesn't do much. But if you're drinking it in a latte, the honey doesn't do much and the brown sugar is what's best. Excuse me. It's just a little interesting thing that I noticed. So if I'm drinking it as just the chai tea, then the, you really want to add the honey. But as a latte, make sure to add brown sugar. It, it's just two completely different dynamics it, where one doesn't really like the other. And it, so that's, uh, that's really what I did here. Uh, now specifically as to why I did this blend, um, for Spice and Wolf, I did a spiced apple chai for a very specific reason. So for those of you that don't know anything about Spice and Wolf, um, basically it, that's a light novel series from Japan, um, and the other tea that I made, uh, Holo's Honey Peach Tea, uh, those are from the same thing. And so the spiced apple chai for Lawrence, uh, he's the spice in Spice and Wolf. And he ended up basically being tricked into buying a crap ton of apples for Holo. So I made a spiced apple chai. And that's basically the whole story behind it, uh, why I did this particular blend. 
And then as far as ginger goes, I made sure to add ginger because that's actually a pretty big standpoint among the the, the series. It, like they they don't overtly go over the over the top to point out ginger or anything, but just about every single book they made it some sort of reference to ginger, whether it's putting ginger in wine to make it more palatable or just ginger in something. So I made sure to put ginger as a, as an accent ingredient just to kind of have a bit of an homage to that because uh, Lawrence was usually talking about ginger in some capacity. So that's about all there is to say about this. Um, you can find it on uh, adagiotees.com. Um, you'll probably have to specifically search for it because it, even though it's technically under a fandom, um, which they actually allow you to do, uh, it won't come up under a direct search for fandom blends. But if you specifically search for uh, um, for either Spice and Wolf or Lawrence's uh, spicy or Lawrence's spicy treat, then you'll find it under that. So. As always, stay safe and enjoy a cup of tea.